Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out the emulation performance of the most powerful handheld gaming PC I've ever been able to test on the channel. This is known as the 1X Player Mini Gundam Edition, and it's powered by a 12-core Alder Lake CPU. We also have LPDDR5 RAM running at 5200 MHz, and overall, it's a great performing little device. I recently did a video on this showing off some PC gaming performance and a little bit of emulation. If you're interested in checking out how this thing performs with PC games, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But this one's going to be strictly dedicated to emulation. We're going to test out some PSP, PS2, some original Xbox, some Switch, some Wii, some PS3, and some Xbox 360. I'm a huge fan of Alder Lake when it comes to emulation, and this is no different. We've got 12 cores and 16 threads. This thing performs absolutely amazingly. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the specs, but like I mentioned, if you're interested in checking out my original video, link for that is in the description. For the CPU, we've got the Intel i7-1260P. This is an Alder Lake CPU, 12 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.4 GHz with the turbo up to 4.7. 16 GB of LPDDR5 running at 5200 MHz. We've got the built-in Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units. This one here came with a 512 GB M.2 SSD. We've got a 7-inch 1920 by 1200 IPS display. It also supports Thunderbolt 4. We've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports here so we can add an eGPU and it comes pre-installed with Windows 11. So I've already done some testing with the lower end emulators and with the 1200p screen we can run basically anything from you know nes up to ps2 at 1200p no issues whatsoever so these first tests are going to be on an external monitor and i want to see how far we can take it we're going to try to go to 4k with the easier to emulate stuff Okay, so like I mentioned, when it comes to PSP, Dreamcast, and even PS2, we're good to go on the built-in display. We can go up to 1080p with all of this, no problem at all. I just wanted to see how far we could push it, if we could run these at 4K. So we're only pulling 15 watts. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 8x resolution with Midnight Club Dub Edition, which is a harder one to emulate, and we're at full speed. Even with Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, we can do 8x. Going up to 10x does dip down, but the easier stuff, you can definitely max out at 10x resolution on this device. Checking out PS2, and with this, to go up to 4K, at least with this game, I did have to go up to 24 watts from 15, but it's playing just fine. We're at 60 FPS, and basically, we're in dock mode right now, so going up to 24 watts or even 28 is not an issue for the built-in battery, because we're on wall power now, and it will play this game under 15 watts on the built-in screen. I just really wanted to see how far we could push it, but not all PS2 games are going to be playable at 4K. Here's Gran Turismo 4, and with this I did have to drop it down to 1440p. The CPU has more than enough power to run this at 4K, but it comes down to that GPU. Once I take this game up to 4K, it maxes it out at 99%, and we just don't have enough GPU power to push those pixels. But 1440p looks great, plays just fine on this device. Now for the Dolphin emulator, it only needs 15 watts to go up to 4K using the Vulcan back in. In some cases, we do hit 99% utilization on that GPU, but overall it will handle 4K with GameCube and Wii quite well. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it's going to run it just fine. Next up, I wanted to test out some 3DS emulation using the Citra emulator. We're at 15 watts here, 4x resolution, and keep in mind, Citra uses OpenGL, and I've always had much better luck on Intel GPUs and NVIDIA with OpenGL as opposed to, you know, Radeon Vega using something like the 5800U. I can only get some of these games up to 2x before they start lagging out. But here, we're at 4x with this unit. Here we have the Simu emulator for Wii U. We've got Bayonetta 2. We're at 1080p, Vulcan back in, running at full speed. Again, we're only at 15 watts. I also tested Breath of the Wild. At 720p, we can do 60, no problem, but taking up to 1080, you might want to turn it down to 30 because we do have some dips into the low 50s. But overall, the Simu emulator does perform really well on this handheld. Checking out some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded, Jet Set Radio 720p, perfectly playable. I mean, we're at 60 FPS, I haven't seen any dips, but it doesn't mean that every Xbox game is going to be playable on this device. And CXBX Reloaded is definitely going to be your best bet. I did try the XEMU emulator, but it seems like we just don't have enough GPU power to run a lot of stuff. And even with CXBX Reloaded, Panzer Dragoon at 25 watts still couldn't hit 60. 
using RPCS3. Here we have Ninja Gaiden, 15 watts, 60 FPS. I also tested out Tekken 6 at 15 watts, but when it comes to the harder to emulate stuff like Skate 3, you do have to turn the wattage up. And going up to 24 watts kind of seems to be a sweet spot for this little chip here. But, you know, Skate 3 is one of those that loves those extra cores and threads. And at 24 watts, it's fully playable at 60 FPS. And keep in mind, we're at 1080p right now. This is some of the best PS3 emulation I've seen on a handheld so far. And it really comes down to this i7-1260p having those 12 cores. Unfortunately, when it comes to Xbox 360 emulation on this device, we don't have enough GPU power. We just can't push it with the XE graphics, and with the Zinnia emulator, which I'm using here, I've always had much better luck with NVIDIA. But keep in mind, this does have Thunderbolt 4, so connecting an eGPU is really easy. And we can definitely run this at full speed. We have enough CPU power, it really comes down to the GPU with this one. And real quick, I'll show you that. I've got my Sonnet eGPU dock with an RTX 3060. Go ahead and plug it in. It's going to initialize. HDMI is going to the 4K monitor through the RTX 3060. So now once this boots up, we've got the i7-1260p CPU, and we paired it up with a 3060. This is a non-TI variant, but going back over to the Zinnia emulator with Forza 2, we get a full speed experience. So this is just one of those emulators that relies heavily on the GPU and the built-in XE graphics just don't have enough power. But the RTX 3060 definitely does and the 1260p CPU has more than enough to push this at full speed. Obviously, this is offering some really great emulation performance. I mean, PS3 with the harder to emulate stuff at full speed on a handheld is really awesome. This is the best performing handheld that I've ever tested for emulation on the channel. These CPUs keep getting more powerful, but this i7-1260p really does it. And I've always been a big fan of Alder Lake when it comes to emulation because of the awesome single core and multi-core performance that these chips put out. I'm pretty sure we're going to see another 1260p powered handheld by the end of 2022, but uh, this is the one I have right now and it does perform really well. If you're interested in checking out what kind of PC game performance this thing puts out, my original video is linked in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this Gundam Edition 1X Player Mini, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.